Okay, so we just started to get into antiderivatives and we're going to get into an integration and we were looking at antiderivatives being able to take the derivative of that to get the original function. And so they, um, so if you were given a rate of change of some function, you could take the antiderivative of that to get the original function. Integration also relates to area under curve um, when we look at definite integrals. But before we do that, let's look at the concept of how they, they got integration as area. And so if you look at the following, we can easily find the area of this curve by breaking it up in shapes that we know. And so if we looked, maybe we could create um, a box here. I'm be able to write on this or not. I am. So we know that the shape, um, area of a rectangle is base times height. And so we have two here and two here. And so that would be two times two. which is four. So now if we take that and we sum it, so let's make another rectangle. And so here we have a length of two, but the height is three. So if we do two times three, this would give us the area would be six, square, square whatever units we're looking at. So breaking this up, we would have two times one, which is two. And then the last piece here is a length of two and the height is five. So plus two times five, which is 10. So four plus six is 10, plus two is 12, plus 10 is 22. And so we found that the area of the shape of the, that was 22 units squared. And so we can do the same sort of idea and find the area of that shape by splitting it up into different pieces. So in this case, we would have one times five, which is five. Plus, we could break this down as um, this length in here. Well, four minus one, that's three. And the height here is two. So three times two is six. Here, length is one, height is three. So one times three is three. And the last one, So eight minus five, so this length is three, and this height is four. So three times four is 12. And so summing this up, five plus six is 11, plus three is 14. 14 plus 12 gives me 28 units squared. Okay, so notice that that the areas that we just found, those rectangles underneath these curves of our function out of that x, it's giving us an approximation exactly of what we just did. Um, so notice the points on that curve already. And so those are basically the values where we're finding our height. And we did a box right here. We saw that that area was four. We made a box right in here. And we saw that this area in here was six. And we did a box in here. Oops, looks like something might be wrong.
Oh yeah, it's okay, sorry. We did the box in here. And this area was two. And last, we did this box. And we said that this area was 10. So if you look at that in the shaded region, that's giving us a pretty close estimate of what the area under f of x is. And so approximating that area, we can say that that is about 22 units squared. Okay, so let's look at the following and then doing the same thing. Let's approximate that area of the curve by looking at the other. So again, if we break this down as rectangles. So notice that this area under this curve, um, this is a underestimate of our area because there's pieces that are left out here. But let's look at this following one. So if we made our rectangles, we saw that this area was five. Then we looked at this rectangle. We said that this area was six. This area was three. And this area we had was 12. You went one up more on the three. Did I? Okay, thank you. Um, three should be at three. It's weird because the, um, oh, it should be, it's hitting at three, but it, it's technically not hitting the curve there. Um, um, I guess if we kept it how we just did, then we would have to do it like that. This one is at four, this is at four. There we go. And so in that case, if we summed all the um, areas of each rectangle, we get 28 units squared. And so in this case, notice that that first rectangle, it's overestimating that piece. Um, that six looks pretty, uh, uh, pretty close. Um, that number three might be underestimating a little bit. Same thing with this, this last rectangle. It's underestimating the curve. But with the overestimating and the underestimating, you're still getting a good approximation. Okay, so the question is, could, we could probably make this a lot more accurate by making more um, rectangles. And that's what we're gonna start doing. Okay, so RAM, rectangle approximation method. So basically we're taking some curve and we're bounding it in between two X values and we're trying to find the area between the curve and the X axis. And so there's a couple different ways that we can do this. So there is the rectangle approximation method, aka Riemann sums. And so we're going to be talking about Riemann sums, and I'm going to remind you how to do Riemann sums either at the end of this class or next class period. Okay, so suppose you want to know the area of a region bounded by a curve in the x-axis and the lines x equals a and x equals b as shown at the right there. The first step is to divide the interval a to b into subintervals. We can draw rectangles using the width of each subinterval as the base. The height of the rectangle is determined by the function's value at that point in the specific subinterval and can be determined by using three different methods. Okay, 
So we could use what is called the left endpoint of each subinterval, or that's what we can use. So if we're going to say that we're going to do this by using the left endpoint of our rectangle approximation, we're just going to call it LRAM for short. If we use the right endpoint of the subinterval to get our height, and then we're going to call that right RAM or um, right rectangular approximation method is what we're using. So our RAM. Sometimes you want to use or you might want to use the midpoint in between the two um, sub intervals. So if you look at the midpoint, we're going to call this MRAM. Okay, so let's look at the example below. So looking at this, um, which rectangular approximation method is shown in the two graphs below? So we're trying to determine, is this using the left RAM, the R RAM, or the M RAM? Left endpoint, right endpoint, or um, the midpoint? I didn't mean to say midpoint between those, okay. Um, so notice here, this first example, that's hitting the left, right, of my rectangle. Basically, this is saying f of zero is equal to two. So that's what I'm using for my height there. Notice this point right here, that's starting my rectangle, this is starting the height on the left. So this value right here, to get this, I would plug in f of 2. So notice again, this is the left to hand side to get my rectangle on the height. So to get this point, this is f of 4. Left hand side, and so this is f of 3. No, f of 6, which is 3. Okay, so because it was starting every time on the left hand side to get the height, this is the left rectangular approximation. Okay, so now looking at the other case, to get the height, notice that it's in the middle of our rectangle. Here, this is point is in the middle. This point is in the middle. This point is in the middle. And so this here is our midpoint rectangle approximation. Okay. So find um, example two. The total area under the curve then approximates is approximately equal to the total area of all the rectangles. Um, which of the graphs above gives a better approximation of the area under the curve? Why do you believe so? And how could it be further improved? So looking at that, does one look like it has a better approximation than the other? So to me, the one on the right using the midpoint in this case looks like a better approximation than the one on the left. So how could we improve this? Well, I kind of talked about if we had more rectangles, the more rectangles we have, the more accurate we're going to get on the approximation of that area under the curve. I must have hit something. Paint tickles.
we give a better approximation. under the curve. Okay, so we're gonna look at some examples. And here's the summary of how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna look at this curve, we're gonna divide it into different partitions, subintervals. And so in subintervals of the interval, so that means we're going to create n rectangles and whose base is equal to the width of the subinterval and whose height is determined by the function's value at the left endpoint, the right endpoint, or the midpoint of the subinterval. So find the area of n rectangles and add them together. Okay, so looking at the following curve, we want to illustrate this by using the um, right hand endpoint, the left hand endpoint, and we want to use five rectangles. Okay, so looking at this, Let's subdivide this. So we need to figure out my A value in this case starts at zero. And I'm going to B, my X value of eight. And so this distance in here from zero to eight, that length is eight. And we want to divide it into five rectangles. So if I look at eight divided by five, this is equal to one and three fifths. Why would they do that? Um, which is equal to 1.6. Let me just look at something they did. They already put the points there. Why did they put the points there? If I did this, this would be the right. So one, two, yeah, three, four, five. Um, this is if they were not the same rectangles. Actually, they did more than that, didn't they? So one, two, three. So ignore, I'm gonna ignore where those points are. Okay, so we're gonna subdivide this into um, different subintervals. So we have 1.6 and we're doing it into five pieces. So 1.6, so two, is about right here. And it told me that I'm going to use the right hand. Where is everything? And point. So my length is. Um, for each sub interval is 1.6. So this is f of um, 1.6. So I have 1.6 all times f of 1.6. And my eyesight is so bad, guys. Um, this that should be about 2.2. So now if I add 1.6 to 1.6, that gets me to 3.2. So that's going to be about right here. And I'm using the right hand side, so I'm going to pick it here and go to the right.
And so this would give me plus, okay, well this length still in here is 1.6 times though the height. So my height though, I'm looking at when X is 3.2. So f of 3.2 in this case is approximately, it looks like 3.5. Okay, so to get my next x value though, I have to add another 1.6. So if I take 3.2 plus another 1.6, this is 4.8. This is still 1.6, but now I'm multiplying by the height, which is giving me my x value 4.8. Oops, sorry. So I'm going to say it's about here. So right hand side, now come over straight across, and that's about, let's say, 1.2. So this is 1.6 all times 1.2. So I need to add another 1.6 to the endpoint. So if I sum this, I get 6.4. So my x value is going to stop at 6.4. right hand endpoint, so go all the way up. That X value, about our Y value there is about 5.2. So this would give me the base of 1.6 all times um, f of 6.4, the right hand value of my sub interval. So that was 1.6 all times 5.2 was the height. Okay, one more piece. And if I add 1.6, I better get back 8. So if I add 1.6 to this piece, to 6.4, this is 8 which is the last um, sub-interval. And so again, my base is still 1.6. I'm looking at f of 8. So I have 1.6, f of 8, the height when x is 8 is 5. Okay, so we need to multiply. Notice that we can factor out a 1.6 because that was the base. So let's just add what is 2.2 plus 3.5 plus 1.2 plus 5.2 plus 5. So I have 2.2 plus 3.5 plus 1.2 plus 5.2 plus 5. I get 17.1. So multiply that by the 1.6. We get 27.36. units squared. Okay, so that was just by doing the left. Sorry, not the left. We were first doing the right. Let me show you. Touched it.
Okay, so we want to do pretty much the same process, but now we want to look at it, but instead of using the right hand side for the height of our rectangle, we're going to use the left hand side as the right of our rectangle. Um, left hand side, again, we wanted to um, break this up into five rectangles, and so you've got to figure out what the length of your whole interval is that you're finding the area under the curve and then divide it by how many rectangles you want. If you want equal number of rectangles, later on we're gonna see that it actually doesn't matter um, if they're equal or not in size. But for now, that's what we're doing. And so again, eight minus zero, B minus A divided by the number you want. So let me just write this in. So N sub intervals, on A to B. You're going to be finding this by B minus A all over N. So this is would equal the length or base of the rectangle. Okay, we already found what that was, which was 1.6. We always want to use, in this case, we're doing the left-hand side. So left-hand side, you're going to hit the function on the left. Now let's figure out where 1.6 is about. So 1.6 here, we're going to hit this on the left. But when I make my rectangle, it's going to look like this. So we're going to go over to the right until we hit 1.6. We already did some of this work. So 1.6 plus 1.6. So the next start would be at 3.2. Okay, so let me go find the height at 3.2, which is right here. So get over my x, x value where I'm starting, adding 1.6 to 3.2 was the 4.8. This left hand side is going to be the height of my next rectangle. Okay, so adding 1.6 from 4.8 gave us 6.4, which is about right here. That left hand side is the height of my next or last rectangle. And so now we want to find the area underneath that curve. And so we need to sum up each one of those rectangles. So again, our base was equal to 1.6. And so the area is approximately 1.6 times, well, if we just sum all those heights. So we're looking at, and this is the left-hand side. So f of zero, f of 1.6, plus f of 3.2, plus f of 4.8, and that was, and plus s, F of 6.4. So F of 0 gives you a height of 2 plus F of 1.6. Well, down here we did some of those that work. So that would be 2.2 plus F of 3.2 was 3.5 plus f of 4.8. 4.8, that was 1.2. f of 6.4, that was 5.2. So summing all the heights, multiplying because we factored out the base.
So that gives us 14.1. We sum all that, multiply by 1.6. Gives us 22.56 units squared. Okay, so estimate on both of them. One looks like it might be more of an overestimate, maybe not. Or not. Let's give you a second just in case you don't have it all. So here's an example. We actually know um, what the equation of our function is. It's telling us that we want to find the area under the curve from x equals 1 to x equals 3. We want to use the left um, rectangle approximation method, the right rectangle approximation method, and the midpoint rectangle approximation to find that area. So looking at this, it's saying from 1 to 2. And it tells me how many rectangles I want. So here's one. Well, they, oh, sorry, one to three. And here's the other. So I need to look at that length. This length in here is three minus one, which is two. We want to sub subdivide that length of two into four rectangles. So two divided by four rectangles is equal to one half is equal to the length of each ba base. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the half point and if I'm doing my left hand rectangle, then I'm starting on the left is where my height's gonna be until I hit here. Okay, so using the rectangles as a guide, find the approximation. So we know that this is equal to one half times the height, so f of one. plus so let's go to the left hand side so this is right here and then going a half will get us to two so this is going to be f of the height of the left hand is 1.5 Plus, we want the height, if we add another half to that in, um, value of that second rectangle, that would get me to 2.5. And then 2.5 to 3. So f of the height, left hand would be 3 plus f of the height, um, and that is at f of 3.5. And then if we multiply it all by the base, because each base is being multiplied by a half. Let's go over here because these are values that we're going to have to look at anyways. And let's look at, at plugging in numbers into this function. So right now, I'm going to just write it down here. I have that, might be over here. 
f of x is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 2. So let's look at the left-hand side, f of 1. If you plug in 1 wherever you see an x, what do we get? We get 1 squared minus 2 times 1 is negative 2. 1 minus 2 um, is negative 1 plus 2. which is one. Okay, so f of one I get is a value of one. Plus f of 1.5. Let's see if my colors change. So f of 1.5 So throw it in the calculator. So 1.5 quantity squared minus 2 times 1.5 plus 2. So that gives me back 1.25. So plus 1.25 plus, so looking at f of 3. 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 2 times 3, which is 6, 9 minus 6 is 3, 3 plus 2, that gives me 5. And then f of 3.5, so plugging in 3.5 wherever I see an x. I get 7.25. I know I'm gonna to have to find it anyway, so let's just look at f of four. So f of four, not f of four. Did I do something wrong? 1.5, that should have been f of two, guys. Shoot. That's f of two. So f of 2 is a little different. I'm ending at 3. I guess I could have left f of 3. Oh, well. f of 2, f of 2, 2 squared, 4 minus 4 is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2. So f of 2. I said it was 2. This would have been f of 2.5. So plugging in 2.5 wherever you see an x. That's 3.25. Plus 3.25. And that's all I really needed to do there. But like I said, I'm going to have to find the end value f of 3 anyway, so I might as well do it now. Um, what did we say? It was 5. So if we sum up what's inside the parentheses and multiply that by 1 half using the left rectangular approximation method, we'd have an approximation. So I did that right, I got 7.5 times 1 half. Which is 3.75. Units squared. 
Okay, so the right approximation method, we would do the same thing. But this time you're looking at the left, um, the right hand side. So at one, you would go to 1.5. This is where the height is going to start. And so move it to the, the height to the left. So now if I go over to two, I'm going to hit on the right hand side is where my height's going to be. So 2.5, right hand side where it hits the graph, that's where my height's going to be. And then three, when I hit that graph, that's where my height's going to be. And so again, all of those bases are the same. And we can save a little bit of time. So we have one half. Um, so what do we get? F of 1.5. F of 1.5, that was 1.25. Um, then we have f of 2. f of 2 we saw was 2. Then we have f of the right hand side. We have f of 2.5. We saw that f of 2.5 was 3.25. The right hand side of the last rectangle was at 3. We found that to be 5. So if we sum all that up, which is 11.5 divided by two. Which gives us 5.75 units squared. Okay, so the midpoint, you have to figure out what the midpoint is between our left and our right hand rectangle. Well, if our left and our right hand rectangle was 1 and 2.5, the midpoint in there is 1.25, and that is where the height's going to be. So this is going to be f of 1.25. So unfortunately, we're going to have to go back and plug in values to figure. I'm not going to have time to do this, but I'm going to set it up for you. And so now we're going to have to look between 1.5 uh, 1 and 2 and find the midpoint. With a midpoint of that value in there, that is f of 1.75. And so go to the left and the right to get to 2. And so to find where the next one's going to be, um, it's a halfway point between 2 and 2.5. So that's 2.25. So 2.25, hit the graph, go left to the right. F of 2.25. And then the last one, in between 2.5 and 3 is 3.75. That's going to be where the height of our function is. Two point seven five. Okay, so we could plug those values in and then figure out what that is. You want to do it? So let me, actually, let's just quickly do it because I think, so we just quickly put our, um, those values into our calculator into the function y equals x squared minus 2x plus 2. And we found the following values of f of those values. We summed them and we found that the midpoint rectangle or approximation was 4.625 units squared. 
squared. So notice, if you look at your left, right um, approximation value and your right hand approximation value, what if we sum those approximation and divide by two? So if we took 3.75 and we added to 5.75 and we took that, we get 9.5 and we divide by two, we get 4.75, which is kind of close to that 4.625. So maybe taking the hat or um, the midpoint might might be better. It depends. Okay, so I just wanted to finish that problem before we stopped for the day. And so we're gonna again, like I mentioned at the beginning of class, we're gonna look at the next section. We're gonna look at is um, reviewing really quick on summation and summation notation, what that means. Because notice what we're basically doing, we're summing the areas of these rectangles. And so we're gonna use that to help us prove or look at the fundamental theorem of calculus. So pretty exciting. Theorem named after the class should be pretty important, right? Okay, I will see you guys tomorrow.